for the fourth and final time for today, Mr. Jorgay will be presenting a talk. Jorgay is a social engineer extraordinaire. He is a forensics enthusiast. He won the Derbycon Social Engineering CTF. And he is the founder with Brian Olson of Through the Hacking Glass, the <coughs> InfoSec mentorship program that he's running with the others. Joe will now present for me the first time ever I see a talk on derailing OSN, on blocking OSN attempts. And I'm looking very much forward to this one. So, Joe, please show us what you got. Thanks. So, welcome to Decepticon. This is the fourth and final of the day. Uh, shameless plugs, I'm going to be speaking tomorrow morning at RSA on the human track at 9.15 if you have uh, proper credentials to get into it. I'll be doing a birds of the feather at 12.30 tomorrow as well. And then uh, the other speaking engagements will cover that at the end. So this is Decepticon. It's basically the anti-OSINT talk. Uh, before we get started, the thoughts and opinions are mine, not IBM's. I say this because I'm a senior security architect at IBM. Uh, I'm a blogger, I'm a podcaster, I write blogs for ever, and uh, I contribute on Peerless. I'm a co-founder of Through the Hacking Glass. I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, I think that summarizes almost everything else on here. Um, so this is the CTF trophy, and on the right is Chris Hadnagy actually uh, awarding the trophy. Um, I think, oh, we've got a Trevor sighting. Trevor, forget. Um, Actually, got more Trevor's. I've, I've got some in my bag too, so I'll give some Trevor's away. Um, anyway, that's just the uh, the trophy and uh, presentation of the trophy. Um, so, uh, pretty cool thing. Wish I could travel with the trophy, but it's class, so I'm not about to do it. Uh, I, I know how airlines are called too well. So, basically, we, we want to talk about where OSINT lies. Uh, Deception, decoys, canaries, encryption, social media, and then identity management. But I don't want to talk about identity and access management because I don't care about single sign-on and stuff like that. I want to talk about identity management in terms of managing your identity, the one that gets stolen when uh, credit bureaus or uh, offices of personal management don't properly secure their things and people come in and steamroll them. So basically, I apologize for those that were in the social engineering talk earlier. Uh, there's a little bit of overlap with this just because I want to set the tone of what OSINT is and how I'm going to go about it. Because to rewind for a moment, the reason I put this talk together, last year I was at SkyDollCon. There was a guy who was giving an anti-OSINT talk. I was so excited for it. I go into this dude's like, I don't have social media accounts. I don't allow my wife and my children to have social media accounts. Uh, if you want to protect yourself, legally change your name and get a new social. My head's over here exploding for all the wrong reasons. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do some research. I'm going to do this the right way. So the reason that I'm talking about the offensive side of OSINT, it's not because I want to teach you how to do OSINT. That was, that was earlier today. I want you to understand what I'm going to do when I'm collecting OSINT on a target with the understanding of some of the advice I'm going to give you, I don't use myself because it's just not a measured risk that I'm concerned with. Doing the amount of public speaking I do, my online identity is there. It's done. I can't hide. There are some ways I cannot hide because of that. So to avoid looking like a hypocrite, I'm framing it from the perspective of this is how I come after you. Here's how you would mitigate it. So just to get the air clear with that. So we're going to get OSINT from the internet. We're going to get it from mass media. Journals like IEEE and ACM conference proceedings that's going to have names, email addresses, name, phone numbers, and it's going to have some context about what they've been studying and researching where their interest lies. Maybe, maybe come in a geographic location. Um, blogs, um, social media, forums found um, for my SECTF target. One of their former employees had posted to a forum about an issue he had with the storage system. He didn't sanitize his email address out of his signature block, and when I searched for that regular expression, I found it. Then I was able to pivot from there to his GitHub account and find out technologies that company used. And he left the company, I believe in June 2016. He was writing in Ruby, JavaScript, and Bash. 
until May 2016. August 2016, he shifted over to No Lane, Ruby, and PowerShell. So, because of that, I now know what his new company uses too. Um, but this is something to be cognizant of. Um, photos, the metadata of photos, what's in the reflection of the photos? I mean, Josh Huff at DerbyCon 2016 did a talk where someone had taken a picture of gas prices. He looked at the reflection on the gas pump, found out what kind of car it was, and was able to dig down deeper and find out who it could have been because there was only three people with that color car in that location. I would think of the, uh, I know these pictures are purely in satire, or I hope they are, where it's kind of like, Woman that's all like ultra ultra scantily clad, and the picture's been taken, and you look, and the person taking the picture was a kid. It's disgusting, but that's the OSIN. That's the kind of stuff you're looking for, right? You're looking for when NBC goes live on the air and they show a picture of their Mac and they have the password on a label on it. You're looking for that. You're looking for badges. If you want to find badges, go to Glassdoor and LinkedIn. But all sorts of places Google Maps, Bing Maps. I like to take drives around my target's environments, see what's going on, see who their delivery company is, find out where their dumpsters are. Uh, for one of my target uh, companies on their site in South Dakota, um, their dumpster company actually had the dumpster company's name and logo on top of the dumpster. So when you looked at it from an aerial view, zoomed in, you could see the dumpster company's name. Yep. That's a fun one. So, this is probably one of the most relevant pictures you'll see today. To me, it depicts the state of affairs. We've got this whole world that we can see, we can experience, but we're too busy looking through the periscope. I want to because I was on submarines, and then it's affiliation with Twitter, um, of Facebook. We look at everything through the lens of social media. When we could just get off of social media, open the door and see things as they are. We allow ourselves to be spun, manipulated, and social engineered using social media because the mere fact that it's a pain. We feel compelled because of going back to the principles of persuasion, the social proof, everybody's doing it. I mean, 20 years ago, nobody ever took a picture of what their dinner looked like. Even if it was like some ultra bomb Thanksgiving, no one took a picture of it. They didn't take a picture of it and say, hey, I need like 12 copies of the sunset list of all my friends. No, they didn't do that. But as time goes on, we do. That's where we are now. So some resources, if you want to do some OSINT on yourself, you want to do a little bit of the attack phase, uh, Intel Techniques and OSINTframework.com, those are both really solid websites. Uh, you don't have to download or install anything for them to work. Uh, you can interact with things like real names, usernames, email addresses, phone numbers, IP addresses, you name it. You can find public records, you can find court records, property records, whatever you're looking for. You can even make up your fake uh, personas on those sites too. If you want to take it a little bit further, not on here, Michael Basil. Uh, the person who runs IntelTechniques.com, he created his own OSINT-specific Linux distribution called Busku. You can download that from IntelTechniques.com as well. But some tools, I'm a huge fan of Recon NG. Like, Recon NG is my jam, if we want to look at it that way. Um, I, I will use it to find net blocks. I will use it to find posts on Shodan, which can tell me about technologies used. I will use it to check have I been pwned to determine how people... Uh, use their corporate email accounts. I can't see the sensitive ones like Ashton Madison, but I can see if they have a Facebook or a MySpace account or Adobe or whatever. That, that, that's just one method. I can take and import a list of usernames and it'll compare it against all these other websites and say, these are the websites that have a username that's valid. That's how I found out that my target for the SCCTF had a Pornhub account or name. It wasn't theirs, but someone had created an account in their name. Exploit is very similar. Recon G is very Metasploit feeling the way it works. Data exploit not so much, but the thing about Data exploit is it has a plugin that Recon G doesn't. 
they'll go scouring across WikiLeaks. I was doing OSINT on a client at my last job, uh, leading up to uh, some phishing phone calls and a couple of phishing emails. I found that they had 33,000 documents on WikiLeaks. They were all in Italian, so I couldn't read them, but they were there. I brought it up to the attention of my security point of contact. He's like, I did not know that's there. Thank you. Onion scan is meant as a privacy tool. Sarah J.B. Lewis wrote it so that you can ensure that your regular internet and your website are not attributed to each other. Alternatively, you can use that to attribute them to each other. Um, the Harvester and Spiderfoot are also tools used. I've not really dug too deep into them because I've developed my rhythm with Intel techniques, with percent framework, with uh, data exploit, and just my own custom Google, my Google food. So I've not really used them. I'm going to try to branch into using them in preparation for the SCCTF, but it's just something to think about. Um, if you want training, Michael Basil, that's the horse's mouth. Chris Hadnagy has a two-day OSINT course. I think he's teaching it at Black Hat this year. Sands has a, uh, an OSINT course with uh, Michael Hoffman. Uh, Justin Seitz has a few OSINT courses, but his are more geared towards leveraging Python to interact with APIs. If you want to learn Python, hands down, take his $50 Python course. You'll learn how to interact with the Twitter API. That's what you do for the practical piece. So you get instant gratification. So it's good stuff. And then, it's not on the slide, but... I have my one day EC council course that right now is both social engineering and OSINT. I'm hopefully going to throw it into a four day course. It'll have both uh, in greater detail. So there's a variety of ways to go about it. So gathering at malls, restaurants, bars, people talk. You know, you hear, I mean, yesterday at the airport, there was a guy in line who worked for Aflac. He got way loose lipped about this conference that they just had in Atlanta. And he was talking about people by name. Uh, he was telling things that shouldn't have been told. He was using vulgar language. And then he was talking like this. And when he realized that no one was looking at him, he started talking like this. And then everybody turned around, rolled their eyes at him, and he shut up again. And they bragged that he had gotten a $10,000 bonus and bought 10 suits with it. So think of how you could frame that for a fish or a fishing pole. Family and friends. Anyone in here, is there anyone in here who does not have a social media account? Okay. Just if you said you didn't, I was going to be like, all right, you got friends, you got family, you got spouse, parents, children, friends, cousins, your job. It's that period. Um, back windshields, we'll get that in a moment. Uh, forms, as I mentioned, uh, based on the mailing list, job boards. I love to go to the career site of any market company. See what technologies they're using. See if they're going to tell me that they, they use Oracle ERP version 12.2.5. Because I know, based on my search of Oracle 12.2.5, that there is a server-side request forgery and a SQL injection vulnerability for that. Most ERP systems typically, if I recall correctly, are internet-facing. So there you have it. Um, alternatively, with one of the flags for the SEC is who is the security company, not like who's the, uh, the cyber company, is who does physical security for your company, who mans the gates. I found an employee that worked for this company whose previous job was with Ally Barton, saying that I was a gate guard with XYZ company. Oh, okay. Oh, and they've got an office in that area. Yep, totally. Perfect correlation, right? And then uh, taking it a step further, search engines. If you come to my talk tomorrow, you'll, you'll learn that your Google food has to be strong. Without strong Google food, you're setting yourself up for a disaster. There's so much stuff to find on Google. Like, for example, phone number syntax. If I know your phone number, well, I'll syntax for your company is 415123. I'll just put that into Google, plus your company name or your company name, dot top level domain, whatever your website. And I'm going to search, and I'm going to find, and I'm going to find your sales people, I'm going to find your marketing people, probably your PR people, and then if you're your execs and lawyers, easily. Okay, these are people to talk to. Okay, then you can call a few adjacent numbers to see if you can enumerate some more names, or accidentally end up in the company directory look for everyone whose last name is Smith, Johnson, uh, Williams, all those common names, and just enumerate more. It's easy. 
Uh, and then social media, I mean, it's just, you're just being fed there. But honestly, when I'm doing stuff, social media is the last place I look. I look everywhere else first. And if I need to go to social media, I will. Because with social media, you're not necessarily targeting the company anymore. You're targeting the employees of the company. And depending on the company, there may be a lot of employees. Like, for example, um, you know, I said I'm at IBM. You could have a million employees. I guarantee you, some idiot that works for IBM has their um, badge in a public profile page. I guarantee it. I'm not going to sit there and go through and find out who. It's not my job. But it's just something, it's just the nature of the beast. So, you know, go to a Google Food. Again, job boards, we discussed that. Forms, the GitHub, yep. Review sites, Yelp. My target was in Louisville, Kentucky. When I got someone on the phone, I built instant rapport with them because I knew that most people in Louisville liked three things. They were foodies, they liked bourbon, big surprise, and craft beer. I'm not a fan of whiskey. I'm really not a fan of beer either, but I was able to talk craft beer game better than I could have with bourbon. So happy Friday. Can't wait to get out of here. I'm gonna go home. I just got this new um, craft beer. I'm so excited to try it. Oh, what's it called? Some local craft brewery that I Googled. Had it written down in my notebook. Oh, I've not had that one. Let me know how it is afterwards. All right, cool. What time do you get out of here? 4.30? Oh, I'm here until 5.30. Oh, bummer. Yeah, I know. I'll trade with you. No, at that point, rapport is built. Anything I said or asked, she felt comfortable. And that's why I got every flag except for two out of Because of that. Um, but review that's like you It tells you people's travel patterns. TripAdvisor is another really good one. I'm, I'm really warming up right now to Amazon wish list. Uh, because one of the search engines I use will actually tell you, hey, here's their Amazon wish list. And I always like to go in and see what kind of dumb or wild or disgusting things people are wanting to buy on Amazon. So with that, um, with this, um, the center photo, Adrian Sinatra is not very impressed by this. Um, it's actually cropped out of a, another picture. He had an owl in his hand at InfoSec, uh, InfoSec World in Orlando, and he was doing his impression of the owl. But, you know, InfoSec people, you can't take us anywhere. We're going we're gonna to crop things to meet our own agendas. Um, he's also one of the, uh, he's the co-founder of DC865, which I'm now a co-organizer of, so that's why. But anyway, with regards to the other two images here, um, too often we, we get we become like Irma Gard girl. We're like, Irma Gard, collect our old literature, which is cool. you got to do it. I've had to reverse that a few times. Um, but anyway, you get to the point of doing it, but it's like the quantity versus quality. You want to you filter the data so that you only have good stuff. Don't be like the underpants now. Because they're like, step one, collect the underpants. Step two, step three, profit. Step one, collect the OSINT. Step two, step three, weaponization, right? There's, no, there's nothing in there for responsibly storing the data, responsibly closing of the data, filtering the data, or doing anything valuable with it. It's just get it all and weaponize it. Which is, I mean, it's an amateur thing, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's kind of like a brute force attack. But anyway, here's a little fun that goes in. We can break this down. Think of this from the lens of you're going to break into someone's house. You scout in the neighborhood and see this on the back of their car. What can we infer from this? Of course, it's all about the weaknesses. So what can we infer? What's that? Maybe. Maybe not. But mom's a teacher. So if you're going to break in, you probably don't want to do it during summer, spring break, fall break, summer holidays, election day, or during uh, snow days or other uh, epidemics. Like if you hear the schools out due to sickness, you probably don't want to break in. Um, go a step further. Dad, it looks like he works out a lot. He might not work out a lot. He might have a body like me and just want to. I think he works out. I don't think he might be ripped or he might have just ripped his ass. We don't know. John, he's old enough to play competitive sports. He's probably going to practice three to five nights a week, and you probably find his team schedule online. 
pay careful attention to away games. Gil, he's a skater. Show up to the skate park, have a Thrasher shirt on, introduce him to uh, the Dead Kennedys since we're in San Francisco. I was trying to do it about a local punk band. Um, and uh, it was really interesting when I did that in Salt Lake City because it was like, SLC Punk is about this city. Who all was on that soundtrack? <laughs> this is so long. It's great. But anyway, introduce, introduce him to something like that. Go a little for it, you're good. At the same time, you know, you might look a little weird trying to make direct contact with a teenager on a skate park, too. So be cautious of that. Um, Je- Jessica's the curve. I can't, I can't infer enough about her. I can't infer anything about her hobbies. I can't tell if she's old enough to stay by herself or if she stays by mom's side, like her mom's great neighbors at school. Or I can't tell any of that. We can tell that there are two dogs. I'm not an advocate for doing harm to animals. So take a couple of dog bones, take some food, throw a tennis ball. It's easy to build a rapport with dogs. You feed them, you got a friend for life. You can go get one of those like massive bones like the size of your arm that takes like months to do. And go. And the thing about it is, really hound, and we know hounds are noisy and they howl a lot. So be very cautious with that. So just you know, be aware of it. So collecting the ocean. This is really going to start winding down the attack phase and really get into the true Decepticon. So we're looking for company data, locations, vendors. Who are they a vendor of? Who are their vendors? Where are they located? Where do I need to go snooping around on Google Maps or Bing Maps or wherever? Where? You can find that on Bloomberg. You can also find a list of all their execs. So people, you can find out those people's affiliations. You can find out a phone number syntax and their domain. <clears throat> That's just one starting point. Are they a member of the Chamber of Commerce, Better Business Bureau, Regional Tech Group, ISAC? How can you gain access to their inner circle? Is the question. Social media, corporate accounts, eh, those are going to be pretty measured. You're not going to find out a whole lot from them. Here's where you are going to find out things. Look for their PR professionals. And I will tell you, the PR teams for companies, especially the one that I had for the ACCTF, they were as bland as potatoes. Straight out of the ground. Bland. They never posted anything. But they were probably the most valuable asset I found. Why? They followed the people who did. So, enumerated, oh, well, here's a PR person for such a company. Oh, let's see who all they follow, who their friends are. Exec, exec, vice president, exec, manager, evangelist, whatever. And I was able to find everybody there. And there was the context. It was there, out in the open. Easy. Find those key employee accounts. You can find out what's bothering them. You can find out their travel habits. These are things that you can have the context for the contact. <coughs> So use some innovative thinking um, for sure. Make sure your Google food is strong. Use, use some off-the-wall search parameters. Search for the email syntax. Search for the phone syntax. Bloomberg.com company name. These are all places to start, and you're going to find out more than the company is willing to admit. This is going to get really tricky for European companies after May 25th when GDPR goes into effect because – Effectively, who is will be a violation of GDPR. So it's the question of, by design, marketing and salespeople try to get their name, NPR people try to get their name out in the open. By you scraping their site for OSINT and finding that, is that technically a violation of GDPR? And right now, the way the law is written, that area is grayer than my last name, and I'm no gray. So you've got that gone. Some more gold mines, the resumes on Indeed, the job postings on Indeed. GitHub repos, social media. Always look for disgruntled customers. They tell you what's really going on with companies. Disgruntled employees tell you a lot too, though. 
happy customers sometimes tell you things, though. Not as often. But you're looking for the social media PR, the execs, the technical staff. The LinkedIn of the technical staff, for sure. Find out what they put on their uh, resume. I mean, do they want to keep it simple or do they want to be precise? Precision is your enemy when you're trying to hide from person. You know, salespeople, they're always willing to make a connection. I try, like, on LinkedIn, I try to look at everyone in the same line, but I just have a hard time accepting people like salespeople on LinkedIn because it's like, I'm not in a position to buy anything. I have no desire to hear about the product because I can't buy anything. And while most of them will take no for an answer, I've dealt with so many that won't. I just typically try to. I try to be neutral, but I end up just casting most of them for that reason. So, you know, it's the way it is. Uh, potential vendors. You know, find out. Are they using silence? Are they using carbon black? Because if you're going to go in on a technical attack, that's going to tell you what you're going to be up against. And only what you're up against is only half the battle. But that allows you to get a trial version of whatever it is they are using, seeing how you can bypass it. One way around it. Um, LinkedIn, I've already mentioned that, but that's where everyone's the chief something, the director of something, or the senior something. So I'm the chief, uh, the senior chief executive uh, director of Joe Relations. Um, not really, but if I were going to do that, that's how I would do it. So anyway, training the people. I'm going to hit this really quickly uh, just because it's important. Uh, from an organizational perspective, training your people is your front line of defense. That's your best bet. So in doing so, have your mitigations. You can have things like proof point. That's going to help with some social engineering. But honestly, you want to use things like rate limiting. So this slide, for the ones that were here for the recent talk, this is a different slide, same concept, different information that's in it. Um, so have things like canaries. If you're using, say, MySQL, on your job description for a database administrator, throw in MongoDB, throw in uh, DB2, throw in MSQL, Oracle, throw in whatever you want, and then just make sure that whoever's doing the vetting knows to look exclusively for MySQL. You can, you can slow things down. And I mean, at the same time, you might find someone who's more talented with Oracle that just really hasn't touched MySQL and said, okay, yeah, let's just let's learn the constellation of this. No big deal. But anyway, we've got that aspect going on. Uh, rate limiting is going to stop me from scraping across your site. Because when I'm using something like FOCA, which I wouldn't try to use, it crashes way too much because it's not been updated since 2012. Um, or Spiderfoot or something like that, it's going to go really fast against the site. If you rate limit, that's going to make me take a lot longer. I may just move to the next target if I'm doing this out of malice. Disinformation, that's with the job descriptions. Um, to some degree, segmentation, some to some degree, DLP. That's going to kind of protect you. Encryption is going to kind of protect you, but it's not going to really, you know, it's not going to be your saving grace. Awareness is going to be. Awareness in all situations. So you've got your policies, yeah, but for my day as a consultant, I was reading uh, some policy documents. Uh, for a client, I was doing the risk assessment leading up to their PCI assessment. And in this document, it said you can't use floppies, but USB was never mentioned. And it had been reviewed in 2017. I was like, hey, who reviewed this? I did. Right in the revised. What do you mean? Still mentioned floppies. Mm -hmm. So technically, I could come into your organization, put in a thumb drive, copy your crown jewels walk out the door and not violate a single policy. I mean, it's the way it's written. Well, I didn't want to put it through legal. Well, you kind of need to. Have a nice day. <coughs> so, train people about insider threat. An untrained user is basically passive insider threat. Train about social engineering and OSINT activities. Let people know that by being an employee, of this company, you will be subjected to people attempting to collect information about you to compromise the company. Have a recurring training. 
You're going to have your annual check the box training. Yep, totally get it. I understand the compliance. Yep, sure. Supplement quarterly or monthly training to talk about the new trends, the new threats that the company's facing, any changes in, te in technology that could impact the employees. Train them on it. Have a role this training. HR, PR, sales, they all have different concerns. The way they address problems, the problems they face, they're different. The way they behave on social media is different. Salespeople, they should be operating in conjunction with PR policy approved by HR. But let's be, let's be honest, it typically doesn't matter. They, they do whatever they read in whichever motivational speak books they're reading this morning. So keep that in mind. Report incidents, who to report to, how to report, when to report, what to report. What actions you want them to take. If they click a fish, they click a fish. Um, or if they click a fish, they fall for a fish, or they just get one. What do you want them to do? Don't push them. You want them to report. You want an open door. Have a non punitive policy. Sure, there's a certain point that if they just keep going, yeah, they just need to go. I'll be honest. But for a person who just simply clicks a single fish, no. That's extreme. Consider gamifying it, but be careful how you gamify because you don't want to be Wells Fargo and have people creating fraudulent accounts. Or, or in this case, going and getting their email address on a phishing list so they get the most phishing emails in the month. So be careful with that. Have the exact company policy for what you want done. Don't use something generic. Use the exact policy. Name exactly who you want them to contact. Don't say IT. Say call the IT some, uh, social engineering phone number at 8675309 extension 1337. Something. Direct them to do it because the vast majority of our organization, they're not security people. We need to stop treating them like they are. Our job as security professionals is to build the systems in such a way that is secure that enables them to do their job. It is also our job to train them in terms of what is relevant for them to know to do their job and to have that collaborative relationship. Too often, and especially on Twitter, we see the whole, everybody's dumb, everybody's stupid, um, why couldn't they do this? It's firm at the stake. I totally get it, but the thing is, that's not enabling anything. I mean, I, I've had tumultuous relationships with devs in the past myself, but really, security and devs, we really need to work together a lot better. And that's partially the security community's fault. It's partially the dev community's fault. So I'll just take the ramp right there. Um, collection considerations. What's the end game? What are you trying to do with this? What value could someone assign to this? What could they do with it if it was stolen? How much does it go for on the dark web? Do you need to protect it a specific way? Is there any legal requirements for this? Any ethical requirements for this? The state that I'm hearing this in, or the country I'm hearing this in, do I have to have any sort of permissions or licenses? For example, in South Carolina, to be to do digital forensics, you pretty much have to have a private investigator's license. So, keeping that in mind, you know, I used to say that the same is not applicable for OSINT. In many states, the law is very vague. So, keep that in mind. Uh, but with it, you know, should you do something a certain way because of the data? Because think of what you're collecting on people. This is all stuff that if they're in Europe, it's GDPR, which means that the, that company could be fined 4% of their annual global revenue for you collecting this. So now let's actually get into the true part of Decepticon. Now that, now that we've framed it in terms of how am I going to collect the data? What am I trying to do with the data? What considerations do I have with the data? Now, how do we make it hard? I don't, I'm going to say impossible because well, there's a will, there's a way. And when you have time and the will, the ways become a lot more simplistic. So let's take a look at this from that perspective. And uh, for those of you who got here late, I'm, I'm, I framed it the way I did in terms of I'm, a, I'm showing how I would attack it. So that whenever I divulge that I don't do all these things, I'm not doing it from a, I'm not being a hypocrite about it. I'm saying, if you don't want me to find this, this is why you do it this way. So 
All right, so you need to know your enemy. So in that sense, who are you concerned about? What, what is the adversary trying to do? Who's the adversary? <coughs> what level of skill do they have? What's the timeline on it? Have you done something to trigger this? Are you a Kardashian live tweeting from fashion shows after you were bragging about having $10 million worth of jewelry in your hotel room? To read more about that, go to my website and read uh, uh, an OSINT cautionary tale about Kim Kardashian. I wrote it about it. So, yeah. And from what I hear, um, Chris Jenner's been dropping a lot of OSINT about uh, her family as of late. I've not looked into it, I've just heard about it. So, yeah. Have you done something to trigger it? Are you, uh, are, are you running for office? Are you a public figure? Are you controversial? What? What's the intention? How could they do this? So understanding where your accounts lie, where your data lies, may be helpful to do OSINT on yourself. Find out, where is it? What vectors are they going to use? If you're dealing with a nation state, go ahead, good luck. You're probably, I mean, I know that term gets tossed around way too much, but if you are if you are truly being targeted by a nation state, good luck. If you are a large company over near the Mint, that claim to be a nation state, we just had poor security policies. I'm sorry. Um, but what happens if they find the data? What happens to me? How much of my information is stolen? Can I get this information back? What impact will it have for me on the long term? Why should I protect it the way I think I should? These are all things, you know, it's more thought provoking than prescriptive. Um, if you want to do some more research on some OPSEC, here's three good blog posts. Uh, on the topic. Um, so hat tips to Leslie Carhart, Micah Hoffman, and Josh Huff. Um, all three really solid in the OSIN community. So um, if you want to opt out, there's links to the opt outs. Uh, if you go to that, it's a Google Doc. Both links go to the same thing. So some people are opposed to using the shortened links, I understand. Totally get it. But um, they go to the same thing, and basically it's a spreadsheet that gives you explicit instructions on how to opt out of all the OSINT repositories that my is aware of that has the ability to opt out. It's not opt out once and you're done, because what happens is information sharing just keeps going around. Somebody buys it, somebody sells it. Somebody buys it, somebody sells it. And it just gets cross-replicated. So you're going to have to, it's a moving target. You may be able to opt out of everything, you may not. If you've ever held a security clearance or a credit score, you're supposed to already there anyway, but some adversaries are not going to go that far to look for it. So, secure internet usage. This is more of the hygiene side, but without the hygiene, you have no offset. If you're just browsing the web all willy nilly, you're not using updated browsers, um, I mean, you're not using a VPN. Chris Roberts was just uh, talking on LinkedIn the other day about. He was flying out here, surprised they let him on a plane, um, but he was flying out here and he was amazed at the number of people who were connected to the Wi-Fi on the plane doing work without using a VPN. I don't know how they figured that out, but it may have been magic. Yeah. yeah. But the point being, not using a VPN. If you're doing something sensitive, VPN. I have a VPN app on my phone. If, if I log into the bank, I'll, I'll open the VPN and just pop, done. Easy. I'm not saying don't use Google. I mean, let's face it, they've got pretty much the best search algorithms. But let's also face it, they collect a lot of data on the users. And since these slides were finished, let's just go ahead and clear the air too. I hear there's another company in this area that does the same thing. Um, what is it? Is it... Uh, is it ear dictionary? Is that what it is? Eye dictionary? Facebook. That's it. it. Took me a second. But it's a calculated risk. You know, do you want to go on Facebook and give all this data so that something like that could happen? Or do you not want to have a Facebook account and I want to not be a cool kid? Or secondly, do you want to not have a Facebook account and not have the ability to control what data is out there about yourself? Because if you have an account, you can tie this stuff together. Other things. Browser add-ons and extensions. Most of them are not vetted. It's not, the, it's not like the Apple Store. 
Cloud storage is it a leaking S3 bucket. I mean, what if I told you you could put files in a leaking S3 bucket and still have them secure? All you have to do is encrypt them before you upload them. Really. And then metadata. If you're uploading files to the internet, probably want to scrub some metadata out, especially if it's pictures. But you know, make sure you might give away what they're using uh, to create Word documents or PDFs or uh, operating systems or your username. You could be giving away such information from the metadata. There's a plugin in Recon and G called Metacrawler that searches for PDFs, Word documents, Excel documents, PowerPoints, and a few other types of documents across the domain. And while they're doing so, um, it actually displays the metadata from the file. So you can find out names, usernames, technologies used, all of that stuff. And it's just, it's brilliant. That's how I start building user lists. But it's something to be cognizant of. Um, for a VPN, you could pay for a VPN like ExpressVPN, ProXPN, uh, Hug My Ass. There's various ones out there. Michael Castle has a list. Um, there's another list. Um, there's a privacy website uh, besides Michael Battles that basically has report cards on VPNs as well. So that's always a good option to go so you can understand what you're getting into. If you don't want to pay for one, you can pay for a cloud instance, be it like DigitalOcean, Azure, AWS, and use the thing. It's open source. It's called Strysand. Um, so it's based on the Strysand effect, which for those of you who don't know, uh, there was a photographer who flipped the coast of Malibu taking pictures of houses. He put them on his website for sale. One of those houses was Barbara Strysand. But prior to the legal action, the pictures had only been viewed six times, four times by her lawyers. After the fact, it went into the hundred thousands. So she brought more attention to herself. So basically, paying homage to her, that's where this came from. I didn't create it, but I do like it. Uh, there's a link to the GitHub for it. Basically, it allows you to stand up a Tor bridge, a VPN concentrator. Um, you can have Wirecard, Tor, uh, VPN, all sorts of things on it. And you control the keys. You don't have to worry about is ExpressVPN selling my log data or my metadata to NSA. I mean, you have to worry about who your cloud provider is, but I mean, at that point, it's like, okay, well, I chose this cloud provider, so I guess I'm fine with whatever they're going to do, right? But nevertheless, something to think about. Um, so going into deception. So how to get into some level of deception. So I look at it from just disinformation or deception, right? So disinformation, social media, soft puppet accounts, fake accounts. I have accounts with my name. I have accounts that don't have my name. I have accounts that have my picture but not my name. I have accounts that have either or both. I have several. You want to be cautious where you create this. I'll talk more about that. Um, same thing with phones. You know, do you want to do you want to use the same phone number for everything, or do you want to have multiple phone numbers? Payments. Same thing with credit card. That's specifically referring to like pseudo app and pseudo payment. With discussion, we've got the honey data, the docs, the pots, the nets, the job postings. I like honey jobs. Those are great. Um, honey docs and canaries. Here, I'll, I'll share with you a free canary that you can immediately take back to your organization. And you're going to think I'm crazy when I first say this, though. So, you know, conventional wisdom says deactivate the administrator account, right? UID 500. Activate it. Set a six character password. It's a password to never expire. Like, wait a minute. You're just asking for me to get popped. Log into every system with it. Then set the, the log on hours to zero. This effectively allows you to store the creds in the database that Mimi Cats will be looking in if someone rolls it. 
They will attempt to log into administrator, but the log on hours are zero. It will never work. That is a surefire 100%. Like you know for a fact, you are under attack. You can tune your SIM, have it to where you have the highest level alarm because someone just tried to log into 192.168.3.45 as administrator from 192.168.3.14, right? You know for a fact, 3.14 is ready for some incident response because somebody just logged in as administrator from it to this other host. It may be worthwhile to look at the other host and see what's going on with it too, just to be safe. But that's a surefire canary. That's free. So just information. We're not making things impossible because it's not going to be, it's not possible to be impossible. We're trying to make it hard. You know, to survive an attack from a bear, you don't have to be the fastest. You don't have to be Hussein Bolt. You just have to be better than the slowest guy. That's it. That's kind of what you're doing here. If you've got a persistent attacker, they're still going to hit you either way. Make them work for it. Make them earn it. It's like, like when I was a consultant and I would be talking to customers about <laughs> pen test. I'm like, well, I really don't want to do the security control. I'm like, no, you make these pen testers earn their money. Like, stack the deck on them. I know they're going to come in and do this. Set this up. It's going to slow them down. I mean, create accounts from all sorts of places. If you travel, do it when you travel. But be cautious. Like with me, because of the public speaking, and basically I follow Friday every um, con that I'm speaking at in the future on Twitter. If I created a fake account in every place I went, it could easily be traced back to me. So consider using a VPN and saying you're in another location, like Hong Kong, Tokyo, Berlin, wherever. Consider that. Use your phone if you feel comfortable. I mean, there's a lot of data that gets yanked off your phone, though. So be cautious with that. Um, put bad data out about yourself. I'll tell you another thing I've learned. If you're a junior, that makes life amazing. My dad got drunk and created a new Facebook account. He put in the wrong birthday. It was almost my birthday, actually. The year was wrong. So I was in a troll group and someone was being a little bit rude and I forget what the context was, but I went and I did my normal, my normal uh, menagerie of things. And I come up with a street view picture of the house. I sanitized it where you can see the house, but you can't see the address, you know, some spook factor. I put it up and like, oh yeah, you think you're such a wise guy? So they're like, we're going to dox you. I'm like, that's cute. Go ahead. They doxed my dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. So I, I don't like my dad. So uh, I get bored and I will um, go through and actually report every single picture he posts to Facebook. Get him in jail for a day and then he comes back putting up more pictures that we'll get him put back in jail. It's like, oh, report, report, report. So I thought it was the funniest thing ever. But anyway, um, spell your name differently. You know, if if your name's William, Will, Willie. There's so many variations. Spread to strip various ways. Bad birthday, wrong location, wrong school. Picture of somebody else. For email, be cautious in the use of Gmail. Why? Because it's a Google product. If you're really that hardcore about security, you probably want to start looking at things like ProtonMail and HushMail. Keep in mind, though, ProtonMail is end to end encrypted as long as you send to another ProtonMail user. You send ProtonMail to Gmail, it's not encrypted. You lose your password to ProtonMail, you're not getting back in because they don't have the keys. Pseudo has a mail function as well. Phone numbers. You can use Google Voice, but keeping with today's theme, you can use the pseudo phone number. That one's a, it will ring, it will receive text, but it's still not your number, right? You can use as you need. For payment. Pseudo has that function as well. Um, you can use Bitcoin to a degree as well. Any cryptocurrency to some degree could do that with all the super next generation, advanced persistent squared blockchain, machine learning, super doohickeys. We are our say, you know, got to be in touch with each other, right? Certain things, buzzword, right? Um, and then, you know, with social media, do it. Have, have multiple accounts. Even if you don't want to use social media, create an account. Put up whatever picture you want. 
the creative host has a privacy setting of only you and put your picture there. That way, when the facial recognition software comes, you have to control it. And that prevents me from going off and creating a fake Facebook account with your name and befriending all the people you went to high school with and start battling them for information. Not that I would ever do that. New Mexico LLCs. You don't have to have any connections whatsoever with your registered agent. You can be purely anonymous. It's not tagged to your name whatsoever. Keep in mind, if you change your name legally, you buy a house, you go to jail, you get married, you die, you get divorced, it's a public record. Those are there forever. So keep that in mind. Landline phones. It's definitely something to keep in mind. You know, Home and the case then takes it off, and then I still go back to have I've been home, and I find out, yeah, this is your email account, or whatever. Credit reporting, let's just not even talk about it for today. Um, publicly traded companies because the SEC. Yep, those are all things to think about. And if you pay tax, you want to avoid that. The problem is you've got to carry cash. The problem is if you're like Klaus and you leave your cash sitting around, somebody can just get it, put it in the bag, and walk out. <laughs> As opposed to if Austin left his credit card sitting around and someone put it in the bag and walked right out, he could get a new card. He could get new cash. If you do, tell me how I'd love to learn. So, what not to do? Adrian's not impressed with me. Sorry. Adrian's hard to impress sometimes. So, don't go for a new social. This is copy and pasted straight from the Social Security Administration's website. <laughs> Basically, I had Michael Basil on my podcast about a month ago, and I asked him point blank, <coughs> in your estimation, need a new social? He's like in the United States right now, five people or less. That's it. Don't go changing your name because it's going to leave the public records. Avoiding social media, you're not going to control the data flow, right? That's something I've been hammering for the last little bit. Deception. Honey, in, import whatever. Honey, import the kids. And make reference to that movie. But you, know, you have interactive honey pots. You're trying to get for intelligence. You're trying to get data from it. Um, it's going to be somewhat there, but it's not necessarily meant for reporting. It's meant for learning. Decoys, they're even less. They're just there to try to spin somebody off. It's like when you do a CTF and you go and you see, okay, they've got pro FTP version of this. They've got um, WordPress and they've got PHP and what do I go after? Right? More than likely two of those are decoys. Okay, it's gonna waste time until you enumerate and figure it out. Canaries. I like canaries because they're easy to report. It's less about monitoring and more about actively reporting. So if you want to use some honey pots. Uh, you can use the AEHD Linux distribution from John Strand, the Advanced Harbinger, or, yep, Advanced Deception Harbinger distribution. There. It's currently on a hiatus, so you can't download it right now. It's coming back through retooling everything. Um, it has various honeypots, some of them including artillery and honey badger. I'm a big fan of Modern Honey Network. I've stood that up in DigitalOcean for 20 bucks or less per month. And like when WannaCry busted out, I got a sample within two days. One thing you have to do is when you configure it, go and change all your banner names because it'll say welcome to the DNA of Honeypot. And nobody wants to infect the DNA of Honeypot. But you can put all sorts of stuff. Um, canaries. You can use things like Red Canary, Canary Tools, or Open Canary. Some are paid, some are free. I don't really play too much with Canaries. But I wanted to make sure that I provided some sort of example if you decide to go that route within your organization or at home. You know, if you think someone, if you think someone's after you, you know, get a canary, free or paid, install it somewhere, you know, nothing else, get a Raspberry Pi, put it on the Pi, put it, put it on your network, done. Wait for the alert, you're done. It's easy. Odds and ends. So VPN and encryption. Will that prevent OSINT? No. 
Will it make things harder? Yes. Because even if something is exfiltrated or uploaded somewhere that it shouldn't be, I'm going to have to go through the process of decryption. And that's going to make it even harder. So it's more realistic just to say, yeah, use your good cyber hygiene. You know, if you want to use email encryption, Proton will have capability, but if you want to use PGP, there's Mailvelope. Mailvelope allows you to PGP encrypt documents and embed it into Gmail or whatever and send it. And it works really well. So cloud storage, same thing. Um, consider single file or directory encryption as appropriate. Consider full disk encryption. What happens if this laptop gets stolen, right? PKI, eh, that has a role, but not, re not very much. So it's worth talking about if you're in a corporate environment, but for personal use, not so much. Um, here's uh, through the hacking glass. It's a peerless project. I uh, just presented about it just before this. But basically, it's trying to be the, the if you think of academia and certification as tiles, it's trying to be the grout between the tiles to fill in the blanks to help people learn the skills and the knowledge that they need to be successful in the workplace to transition into other infotech jobs or even just get into infosec in general. So we're going to pair mentors and mentees together. Right now, uh, we're using the mailing list to track people. So um, we've got about 140 users on it. Unfortunately, we only have eight mentors. So if you feel that you're capable of mentoring someone on anything, sign up as a mentor. Um, basically, we're trying to work with vendors to uh, set up the range environment to actually use vendor tools uh, with NFR licenses and the understanding that they're not allowed to harass the mentors and mentees for sales leads. If they decide they want to become a sales lead, they can say, sure. Um, but with that, the five roles would be um, harden, attack, monitor, uh, respond, and analyze. So the two that probably makes the least sense would be Respond, that's going to be your forensics and incident response piece. Analyze is going to take information from the monitoring person as well as the incident response person and produce some threat intelligence. Uh, it won't get published because we're not going to be putting people's public IPs out as threat intelligence unless they really hard doing malicious things. Uh, but anyway, um, it's kind of, there, there are certain aspects of it that's like a CTF, some that aren't. Uh, but definitely take a look. There's all the information for it. Um, there's my future speaking engagements. Uh, if you want to take the social engineering course, it's going to be offered at SERI on June 15th. Uh, you'd have to register through EC Council. Um, any questions? All right, so I got some free stuff here, too. Um, if you want free tickets to Hacker Halted in Atlanta uh, on September 13th and 14th, here's the coupon code. You use it as many times as you want. It's all good. And then if you want... Uh, $100 off the Storm Kit, which is a touchscreen Raspberry Pi running Cali. It comes in a very small container that has a uh, roll up USB keyboard. 100 bucks off. There's that too. And I think CalCon 2017 in the hotel. Let's take a closer look. Soccer teams. That's not their last name, I verified. Um, but nevertheless, these were outside every kid on the soccer teams in a hotel full of hackers. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> so, yeah. It's like, obviously, you can see the team name, Jacob, Lucas. We've got their number. We can go to the website, validate all the information. We can do some more about the families. We can get a little bit more information, find out that team schedule, and then just bring out it from there. It's... Not a, it's not a fun place to be. But beyond that, um, there are no questions. Thank you very much.